What's up, guys? I didn't make a video of this, of what I've been doing right here. Give you a little sneak peek. See that sneak peek? Uh, but we'll show you what's going on right quick because this make a good intro to some video. 806 driver. All right. This dozer, this D6C here, is in a bad way. Was in a bad way. It's still in a bad way, but it's not near as bad as what it was. Y'all can see we were out here in the middle of nowhere. The guy was uh, cleaning this fence rows with this, with this D6C. Sorry about the wind. But the whole undercarriage, the bolts broke right here on the undercarriage. There we go. And the whole thing, the whole track housing slid out like that. So I had to get it twisted and positioned back up in there, which I've been working on for about a day and a half now. So I got it done, got the dozer blade holding it in place right here. And I got the back hole holding the front in place. This is a free floating suspension up front. The only thing that holds it secure is this uh, spindle nut here and the four bolts that go back there on that suspension part I was showing you on that leaf. On that leaf. Um, when it broke, this whole piece came off of the final drive and was laying out here on its side. Strip pulled all the threads here, so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to get that that spindle replaced. Or the owner is. If you look inside that nut, them threads are gone. You pulled them all out. So, but we got we're about two miles from this guy's barn. So my thinking is, get that nut on there as far as we can get it, spot weld it, and uh, get the bolts back in the suspension deal. We got the the broke ones out and spot weld that nut back on there and get it up to the barn where it's a lot easier. <coughs> Excuse me to work on. We're going to break the track and pull the final drives. It takes a special puller to pull those final drives, and that puller is eight thousand dollars. So I imagine that he'll have to call Caterpillar or John Deere or somebody out here to do that for him. So, but that's what I've been doing Thursday, Friday after the corn harvest. Uh, we got a lot going on. We are running around like chickens with our heads cut off right now. Even the boss man is running a truck right now, hauling peanuts. They done kicked off, so it's fixing to get wild, y'all. About to get wild. Fixing to. 806 driver. Catch y'all later. Interstate 287. That's what I always call it anyway. Here we go, here we go. Peanut harvest has officially kicked off for us, y'all. Today, today, Junior. Today, Junior. Got myself, Uncle Adam, and Jerry. We uh, pulled in two birdsong peanuts here in Memphis, Texas. Big city of Memphis, Texas. We grabbed three empty field trailers. And we we're going to take them over to Eric, Oklahoma, to a farmer over there. That's the plan right now. So today, there's about four or five 
different things we could be doing during the, during the harvest. And uh, today it looks like we're gonna be spotting empty trailers out in the field for the farmers to be able to have to load up with their peanuts as they are uh, combining them, as they are gathering them up. So uh, that is probably the plan today. These trailers that we are we're hooked up to, they're 96 wide band trailers that have a, uh, a false floor in them. And it's got a big hole in the front. You might have noticed it right there in the footage been backing up to the trailer. A big hole in the front of it. Well, that hole in the front is, uh, that's where they hook a blower up to. And it blows air up underneath those peanuts to help dry them out before they can get ready to test them and process them. Uh, these trailers are... 102 wide trailers with 96 wide axles underneath them. They are it's got, got old school Dayton wheels on them. If y'all know what a Dayton wheel is, it's a spoke wheel. And uh, just pretty squirrely trailers sometimes. They have tarps on the top of them, which half the time give you hell. And uh, this one I got right here, it's got all brand new straps on it. The ratchets look good, so got lucky there today on this one. I don't know how many we're going to move. I don't know what's going on 100% today. I'm waiting for the farmer to call me back to uh, give me a location of where, he's, uh, where we need to drop these. So, uh, so that's what we're doing right now, y'all. Being that time. I told y'all it was coming. It's finally here. So, uh, if you're new to the channel, welcome to the channel. Hit that subscribe button. Leave us a like, leave us a comment. For all y'all been here with us for a while, welcome back, y'all. And, uh, hell, I'll get over here in a minute. We'll get some more footage. Ain't no six driver. BMB truck. See y'all in Oklahoma. Five rooms in it, and only two of them were livable. 
but she rented it out to us. And uh, our yard was about, I don't know, about 25 miles uh, north of here, where we ran out of. And uh, when I first started the oil field, uh, I was uh, hauling salt water in a vacuum truck. There's a loves up here. We're right here off of I-40, y'all. We, we kind of come in the back way, stay away from the scale house. These old trailers, they're kind of kind of squirrely. So we come through the country, come around the port of entry. And uh, we're on Highway 30 right here. And uh, we will go underneath I-40 up here. I'm gonna cut y'all loose when we go underneath I-40. I gotta start watching my uh, GPS. I kind of remember where this guy's farm is, but I kind of don't. But, uh, then I'll catch back in with y'all when we get when we get uh, closer to the farm. I'll probably leave the GoPro running, and we'll just uh, I'll speed her up and uh, we'll get to the farm. But uh, yeah, there's a little pizza joint. They finally built the Dollar General here. I see too. Could have used that back in the day because man, you couldn't find nothing around here. If you needed some deodorant or whatever, you had to drive all the way to Elk City, Oklahoma, which is or Sayer, Oklahoma, which is on down the road a ways. They had a little grocery store downtown, but man, you got lucky. Lucky if you could catch him, man. Of course, you got a Loves right here, but you know, for a stick of deodorant that Loves and a stick of deodorant that uh, you can buy four of them at Dollar General for what you pay for one at, at Loves. Like I said, I'm going to start watching my GPS and uh, we got to turn on the County Road 1210 and head east to County Road 1770 and go quarter mile north and west into. That's my, that's my direction. So We just went under I-40 right there, y'all. Hang your left and go to Amarillo. Hang your right and go to Oklahoma City.
up here to 1770, which is this section line right here in front of us. Take a left, go a quarter mile north and west into. So we are headed east right now. So we're gonna hang left and go north, and then hang another left and go into the field. I can see the pivot over here, the circle. Uh, and you can tell where you, they've already dug up the peanuts. So they'll start thrashing them. He said, I talked to the farmer, he said they'll probably start thrashing them, combining them this evening. So they have to wait, wait till they get dry enough. show you all these peanuts see they dug them up on that vine there they got a bunch of them on there they'll come through and combine them and separate them from the plant all of that field out there it's all, all peanuts Yeah, 
like I said, we are headed out. We are going to go back to Wellington, Texas. And pick up a couple more trailers, uh, three more trailers, and bring them right back to this location. Ain't much to it right now. Uh, man, I don't know if y'all can tell, but it's really sandy inside them places. And uh, it sucks. Our trucks all have uh, 11 or 24.5 tall rubber on which 11R is tall rubber um, some other companies will come out here and do the same thing we're doing they'll drop a trailer in the field but there's a lot of them that got them low pro 22 fives and man I tell you what sometimes it can be a bitch a big old bitch to uh, get back underneath these trailers in the sand man we have hell I, I, I have hell Somewhere, every year I have a hard time with one somewhere. I have to do some digging and blocking and everything else. So uh, I didn't even put my blocks back on my truck yet. I'm probably going to put some blocks on here, a couple of 4x4s four to help me out. But uh, so y'all get to see that footage one of these days uh, as these farmers start filling these trailers up. And we got to go out to come back out here. And what happened a lot of times, we'll end up, like right now, we're bobtailing back to Wellington. But a lot of times we'll bring the empty out somewhere and then we'll jump over to another field and grab a loaded trailer and take it back into the plant to be processed. So uh, we'll get back to the plant in Wellington here in a minute. To uh, We picked up the first set of trailers at the plant in Memphis, but it's closer to Wellington from here. So we'll go to Wellington to uh, pick up the next set of trailers to bring out here. Unless they don't have any, but as far as I know, they have some. So, so that's the plan. Gonna jump on this little black top here and head back to the highway and get going that way. I'm about on empty there. It's alright. I brought my bubba mug full of water today too, so.
not a big change. We're in Wellington right now. Just pulled in here. Uh, talked to the manager of the plant, Mr. James. What's up, Mr. James, if you watch this? But uh, he said they're short on trailers over here right now, so we got to go on to Memphis, which is another 30 miles over here, to get some trailers. They're short right now over here, so that's what we're doing. We're going to keep on trucking on through here. Uh, we're going to probably get to Memphis just a little after lunch. Uh, Uncle Adam called his mom. Be uh, Grandma Francis and my wife's grandma. My grandma. I can say, I can say she's my grandma. So we've been married for 20 years. And uh, she treats me like a grandson, treats me like a son. So, uh, but she's making lunch. So we're going to swing in there, bobtail, right quick, grab a little something to eat. Meet back down there at the Birdsong plant at 1 o'clock to pick up another trailer and we're going to go right back to where we just came from. So, uh, Without further ado, we're gonna roll on through Wellington here, which we're already almost out. You gotta love these uh, Texas Panhandle small towns. Take about two minutes, two and a half minutes to go through. <laughs> Home of the Skyrockets. Big rivalry for us. They've been kicking our butts for years, so they all they got a good program over here. Always, always got a good football team. We're going to ride on out, get to Memphis, Cycloneville. What's a cyclone? Always a cyclone, man. Catch y'all on the
trailer loaded or hooked up, another empty and another one dropped off. I ain't getting no footage in between, just when y'all see me hook up and unhook, that's where we was. So, uh, y'all never guess it. This road that I'm going down right now, kind of hard to see the way I got my phone mounted right now. My GoPro's over here, it got dirty while ago I was unhooked and I got to clean it off. So, do it this way. But this old road right here I'm going down, this old rough road, is the actual for real route 66 that runs parallel with i-40 coming out of air oklahoma going west toward the texas state line texola where the scale house is right there actually if, it, if i was to keep going straight right here i would come out at texola oklahoma and you would have to get back up on i-40 over there by the scale house but we're about to make a lift on highway 30 and head south and uh, he's back into Texas, back that way. We're bobtail right now. Uh, what we did is uh, we dropped two a piece. We got six trailers dropped in for that farmer over there right now. Um, we're going to, I called James, Mr. James, just telling y'all about. And we are going to uh, go back to Wellington and there's supposed to be some uh, grated peanuts ready. What grated means is peanuts come in from the field on those trailers well they'll test them there they'll dry them first get them get them where they're dry then they test them and they grade them you know uh, I, i'm not sure what if a it's like b for what choice premium black label whatever but you know i'm sure it's uh a b c d or whatever and then uh once they had the peanuts graded there at wellington they don't have no storage facilities there in Wellington, so what they got to do is we have to haul the grated peanuts to Memphis, and then we'll dump them at Memphis, and they'll put them uh, they'll put them into storage there, and then toward the end of the season, and they'll they'll start hauling out of Memphis, and, and we still even during the season we'll haul some down to Brownfield. That's where the big plant is. That's where they actually shell the peanuts and. Uh, and make them into all kinds of peanut product there. Uh, they, they bag them, and then there's a cold storage facility there, and there's one back in Memphis, so they'll bring them back to Memphis uh, and be ready to ship out to Kroger's, Walmart, uh, Planners, whoever, you know. <laughs> Sorry about that. <sighs> that peanut dust, that's what it does to me, so. But, uh, yeah, so it's, it's, and I'll kind of explain the processes at different places as I get to them throughout this little harvest here. Uh, so appreciate appreciate y'all hanging out. And uh, be sure to hit that like, like button, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, you know, help us the channel. Uh, we're a little over 750 subscribers now. Man, we've really, uh, We've gotten a few more subscribers in the last week or two. That's uh, that's good. Hopefully, we're, we're inching toward that 1,000. So that, that goal is getting closer. Uh, I kind of found a way to cheat and be able to go live, but uh, I'm not gonna do it straight through the through the YouTube app though. Just would be a lot better. So and I want to be able to start posting on that community thread. You can't do that until you have over a thousand subscribers. So. Yeah, I gotta wait till 10,000 before we can do them little short deals and my uh, stories or whatever. So but we'll get there one of these days, y'all. Yeah, we'll just keep on keeping on. That's how we do it over here. Um, hot October 6th, and it is 90 degrees outside, y'all. Showing 87 on the dash, but when I park, it goes up to about 92, 93. That's, that's a little warm this time of year uh, for this neck of the woods. Usually we're in the 70s right now and the 40s and 50s in the morning so uh, kind of our average temperatures but anyway i'll uh, i'll let y'all get back at it and uh we'll catch y'all when we uh get hooked up to these grated peanuts over here show you the facility a little bit they don't see strap see you in a bit all right y'all we're rolling into wellington here we're already rolled in to Wellington. The 
plants right up here in front of us. See old Jerry turning up there maybe. I don't know if that camera reach out that far or not. Apologize if it's a little shaky. I'm using my phone again and it's that mount that I have up there. I need to get a different mount that's a little more sturdy that hold that camera still. It's got a little leg on it. It's got a little bit of, little bit of slop to it. Get the bumps and bounces around and crap. I go over here to the office and check in. All right, if y'all look up here to the right, and I don't know if y'all be able to see it right now, but there's some blue turbine looking deals one two three four five six seven eight nine there's ten of them right there those are the dryers that hook to the front of these trailers there's a few trailers there getting dried off right now they're getting dried right. peanuts are getting dried right now so maybe i'll try to get y'all in there get a look at it here later right here's the conveyor belts they got two of them here where they will dump I imagine we're just going to pick up trailers that have already been graded. Shouldn't have to wait on anything to be dumped or not. Get in here and get behind Jerry right quick. Adam's right behind me. They should give us a trailer number to go find. We'll be back. Alright y'all. We got a trailer. Number 151. We gotta go back over here and weigh out. Got Adam. Uncle Adam there. Weighing out. Jerry's right behind him. Trailers are loaded. We'll weigh out and we'll take them to uh, we'll take them back to Memphis, where they can put them in storage. You gotta really look these trailers. I'll show y'all kind of what we deal with here. Look at that landing gear. It's the welds broke right there, so they got a ratchet strap helping hold it up. Which these are field trailers, y'all. This is what you deal with with farm, farming stuff. Old Brandom Trucking, Amarillo, Texas. Shout out to Evie and Kevin. I used to be leased on to them one time. Got come along back here holding the holding the back doors open, or holding them closed, not open. But here's your little peep sight. Tell if the trailer's loaded or not. Full of goobers. We got our tarp rolled over. There's those blowers I was telling y'all about. Yep. All the straps were good. Thank goodness. Tarp rolled good. I didn't have to get on top. Sometimes you gotta get on top and fight them things. Uh, them blowers I was telling y'all about, y'all. This is what they hook up to right here. And they blow air underneath here in that floor it's just a false bottom it's got little holes in it and it lets that air circulate up through the peanuts out through the top of the trailer and that's why it helps dry them out so shoot i'm gonna go get on the scale we'll catch y'all in a minute shoot i was sitting there bsing y'all and i didn't hook up my airlines rookie there we go yeah, y'all call me a rookie. Super rookie, that is. Can't be a super trucker without being a super rookie, right? Yep. 
you gotta look over here there's a there's a bunch more of those dryers those blowers that dry dry out the peanuts right here see them in that circle there you know they line those trailers up and around in a big circle right there and dry them out right here as well as they come in from the field got a farmer right there right in front of us here he's bringing in him a little short load probably what they finished up finished up with Some grain bins in front of us there that might have turned too early Get behind this little feller. All right, I'm trying to show y'all some stuff here. Some more stuff. Right here, where those trailers pulled under that bin, that's where they grade the peanuts at. It's got a machine goes in there, and it'll suck out so many peanuts and see that girl coming down with that bag right there she's got a sample bag i'll we'll take it over here to this to the building and uh these people are uh, are employed by the usda and uh they're the ones that do all the all the testing of the peanuts all right if they get once they get in here say we bring one of our own trailers in here we'll go to this uh dump right here They'll raise it up. There's a pit right right there where that white panel is right there. There's a pit right there. They'll dump the peanuts out of these trailers. It'll go up that conveyor belt and right down into one of our trailers. If we ever got to transfer it, they'll do the same thing. There's another dump over there and they'll do the same thing over there on that side. Interesting little setup. The guy that runs this deal, um, James, man, he's a he's a cool guy, real cool guy. I'd hate to have his job, boy, because I think he probably got it made, you know, nine months out of the year, but three months out of the year, he's running around like a chicken with his head cut off, y'all. <coughs> excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. That's no corona. That's just uh, the allergies. I gotta tell my wife to go buy me some more some more medicine too today. I already used my last one this morning. It's already wearing off. It's a uh, 4.15 p.m. I don't know if we'll have to dump these. When we, I hope we get to dump these when we get to Memphis. That way I get some footage of that, but we might just drop them there. So if we just drop them, it ain't gonna be, be kind of lackluster. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. And uh, help. I'm gonna get on these scales here in a minute, sit here and uh, jack with the phone and we'll catch y'all in a minute. Plenty of dumping involved. I didn't even take Molly's upper cut. Alright, we're 
I think it's 28, wasn't it? Isn't that what they used to give us on this? 28 or 32, something like that? Uh, I don't know. It's gotta be 30 miles. Welcome back to I 287, y'all. Hey, what's up to Corey coming up on the bicycle here? What's up, Corey? He didn't want to wave us. That's our local bicycle man right there. He drives around everywhere on his bicycle. Five o'clock, y'all. Yeah, five o'clock somewhere. Five o'clock here.
rig just went down right here now. Thank you.